Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching the 15th episode of the Scaling Rail screencast series sponsored by New Relic. This episode is the first of two parts where we're going to be taking a look at how to load test your Rails applications. In part one, first we're going to make sure everyone's on the same page and knows exactly what load testing is, followed by a tutorial on Apache Bench, one of the simplest tools you can use to do load testing. Then we'll be taking a look at HTTPerf, which is another tool to do load testing, but it's a little bit more sophisticated than Apache Bench. Then in part two, we're going to be taking a look at how to use HTTPerf with sessions, followed by a look at how to use AutoBench to automate our HTTPerf tests, then at some tools that allow us to visualize the results we get out of AutoBench, and then lastly, we'll take a look at a few other tools you might want to know about to do load testing. So let's get going. Well, first of all, what exactly is load testing? If you looked up a definition, it might define it as the process of putting demand on a system or device and measuring its response. This makes me think of crash test dummies. You know, we might put them in a car, overload the car by smashing it into the wall, and then measuring the response of the car and the dummies. So how do we test our web application? Well, what we might do is create a bunch of clients and have those clients all hit the web server at the same time, overload the server, and measure the results. Some of you might be thinking, well, isn't that what New Relic RPM does? Doesn't that do load testing? Well, not quite. What RPM does is performance monitoring. So it allows you to monitor your application and performance to see how it's doing. For example, to see, you know, what throughput looks like and what response time looks like. It doesn't really do load testing. Load testing is typically something you do before you deploy the code. You want to see what the system does and a heavy load before you deploy it, so you load test it. So what tools then do we use for load testing? The tools we're going to look at today to do load testing are all command line tools. Why do we want to learn command line tools? Well, so we can be elite hacksers like these guys and hack the Gibsons and save the world. Yeah. No. <laughs> There's a reason, though, that we want to learn command line tools. This isn't it. The reason we want to learn command line tools goes something like this. Here's our web application. It's probably maybe co-located, maybe on Slicehost, maybe on Amazon EC2, some remote place. And here's our computer. And maybe we spawn up some load tests on our local computer. Maybe we have three, you know, load testers there. And they go to hit our web application remotely. And they have to go across the internets, which isn't so good, because this might introduce late latency into our test results. And we get inaccurate results, because it's adding on this latency, because it has to go through the series of tubes. So what does this tell us? Well, this tells us that when we do load testing, we want to do it really close, as close as we can get to our production server, but not on the same box as our production server, right? Because if we did that, we might be stealing CPU cycles from our production app. So a good example of this might be if we're hosting on EC2, we might spawn up a new EC2 instance to do load testing. Or if we're on slice host, maybe we get a new slice just for load testing, right? So here, we're going to be moving our load test testers over to that remote location and testing from there. And if you're deploying a Rails application, odds are you're using some flavor of Linux, which means it might not be too easy to get access to a graphical interface. That's why we want to learn command line tools so we can easily SSH in there and run our command line tools on those remote servers. Now the first load testing tool we're going to learn about is Apache Bench. And Apache Bench ships with the Apache web server, so you might already have it installed. You can find out by just running the AB command, and you get a list back of options which will help you run Apache Bench. Now don't worry, there's only two commands we need to know about to get started with Apache Bench. The first is dash "-n", which specifies how many requests we want to hit the server with. And the second is dash "-c", which specifies how many requests we want to be hitting the server with at a time. So let's find out what happens when we run this Apache Bench command against our local web server. Now you'll notice I am running my load tests on the same server where I have my web server, and I just told you not to do that. But I'm just playing around with the Apache Bench, so it's okay, and you might want to do the same. So let's see what happens when we run this command. There's our load tester. There's our web application. We said N3, so we basically said we wanted three requests, and there's our three dudes. Now we also want to keep track of the timeline here, so we're going to keep track of seconds elapsed, and go. So uh, first of all, here goes our first request. Our guy hits the server. That's going to return. 
Now, if that request took 200 milliseconds, we're now at 0.2 seconds. And as soon as that re request comes back, the next guy is going to go and hit our web application. That's going to come back. Now maybe 0.4 seconds elapsed. And you'll notice here, C equals 1. Only one request can be hitting the server at the same time. So each one is going to wait sequentially for the previous one to come back before it goes out and hits the server. And that one comes back. Now as soon as that's done, it's going to print out some results. It's going to give us some stats on our load and how quickly our server responded to each request. Now obviously doing three requests only one at a time isn't really putting a heavy load on our web server. So what might be a more realistic command that we might run? We might say do 400 requests as fast as you can but only allow 10 requests to run at the same time. Okay that's more realistic and here is the output that we might get. Now obviously that's a lot of information so let's just look at the important bits. First of all, this is showing us requests per second. So our server was able to do 75.93 requests per second. Not bad. And the time it took for each request to get to the server and come back was 131 milliseconds. The other bit that's interesting here is these percentages. So this is saying 50% of the requests came back within 103 milliseconds. That's pretty good. And the longest request took 335 milliseconds. So we might want to keep an eye on these numbers. It's probably not acceptable if a request takes more than, say, you know, three or four seconds to get back to the server. Maybe even less. Next, we're going to be talking about HTTPerf, which was created by HP, and it's a little bit better than Apache Bench. And I'll show you why in a few minutes. You can install HTTPerf by either grabbing the source from this HP website. There's also some good documentation on there. You can also use Mac ports. However, if you want to load test with sessions and cookies with Rails, I recommend you get the source from my GitHub account right there. There's a small fix in there that allows you to use bigger cookies than they have built in with the original HTTPerf source. A simple HTTPerf command might look something like this. We've got number of connections 3 and rate equals 1. And at first glance, you might think this is pretty similar to Apache Bench. However, it means something slightly different. Really, the rate means something slightly different. Here's our load tester. Here's our web application. We have three guys again because we have three connections. And here we're going to keep track of time. Now, what that rate 1 is saying is send one request per second. So that second request isn't going to fire until we've hit one second. So we hit one second, the second request goes ahead and fires at that point. Now we hit two seconds, well, the third request is going to go ahead and fire, whether or not the second one has come back yet. Okay, so you can see here this is the big difference. Now obviously having three requests that are running one per second isn't going to put a heavy load in our server. So we need to increase this number. Maybe we'd run something like this. We've got uh, 110. So basically, we're saying do 100 requests, sending out 10 per second. And the cool thing about HTTPerf is that it's smart enough to not send all 10 requests out every second. It's actually going to space them out evenly. So doing 10 requests per second, it's going to be sending out a single request every 100 milliseconds. Pretty cool. Now, if we ran this command, here's the output we would get. There's a lot of information here. We're not going to go through all of it. I'm just going to pull out some of the important bits, starting with this line you see here. Now, at the very end of this line, you see where it says one samples. We're going to ignore that for now and come back to it later. So we take a look here. Right here, we've got average replies per second. All right, so that's saying sending 10 connections per second, we're getting 10 replies per second on average. Now over here on the right hand side, we have standard deviation. Now you want to keep an eye on this number. If it goes really high, odds are your server might be doing something weird, you might have some weird code, and you can't trust your results. So you want to make sure your standard deviation stays low. Now with this command, we were sending to the server 10 requests per second, as you can see here. And we got back from the server an average of 10 responses per second. In other words, we're not really overloading our server at all. We're sending at it 10 requests per second, and it totally handled 10 requests per second. So we need to turn that up to see how much our server can handle.
So how about we turn it up to 20 requests per second with 200 requests? Okay, here's the results. And again, we got 20 responses per second. So that wasn't a big enough load. So let's increase that. 300 connections at 30 requests per second. And hmm, that didn't really load up our server either. How about we double that to 60 requests per second and do 600 requests. Oh, hey, look, the average responses per second is now 56.1. So we've reached some sort of threshold that's telling us that our server might not be able to handle above 56 requests per second. So now let's take a look back at what that sample thing was that we saw earlier. Well, it turns out when you run HTTPerf, a sample or measurement is taken every five seconds. What does that exactly mean? Well, here's a timeline that represents sort of the time when a HTTP perf test is running. So here's zero seconds, and here's 12.5 seconds, and now we're going to hit return and execute the test. So here it goes, it's executing, and now it hits five seconds, and it takes a measurement. So at five seconds, it was 12 response per second, and at 10 seconds, it was 14 responses per second. Okay, so we can say that this test had two samples. And if we wanted to find the average responses per second, obviously we'd average those two samples together. Make sense? So now let's take a look back at running 600 connections against the server, 60 per second. So here it is with the samples. So it took two samples. That makes sense because when you think about it, 600 connections at 60 per second that means it's going to run roughly 10 seconds, but we know it's going to take a little bit longer than 10 seconds because it's only able to process 56 requests per second, as we can see here. So it probably took 11 seconds to complete. Now, if we increase that to 1,200 connections, 60 per second, we can see now that four samples were taken. So we got a little bit more accurate. Now, if you really want to get accurate um, and you're doing this to, to really test your system you know, professionally and not just fooling around on your local host, you're going to want to run a lot of samples to get an accurate number, maybe up to 40, maybe even up to 100. Now, let's take a look at one more piece of data that we got back from our HTTP perf load test. Here we've got reply time response 1305. What this is telling us is that for all of the requests that we sent to the server, on average, they took 1.3 seconds to return from the server, from the moment that we sent the request to the moment that we got the first bit of the response. On average, it took 1.3 seconds. Maybe that's not so good. So what that's telling us is maybe sending 60 requests per second to the server well, it's going to get us a longer response time. So how would we improve that? Well, Maybe we want to find the proper rate that it will run at and keep the response time below 500 milliseconds, you know, good response time for our users. So, so let's run the HTTP perf command again, this time with 1200 requests at 55 requests per second and see what happens. So here's what we might get as our output. And as you can see here, the reply time here is 453 milliseconds. So we kept it under 500 milliseconds and uh, with a throughput of 55 requests per second, and we had a pretty good response time. So this is good. It's a good record of how much our system can handle and still have a good response time. The next piece of output that's important to keep an eye on is this errors line here. So this is going to give us the total number of errors followed by the number of times the client timed out. Now, if you take a look at the HTT perf command again, up in the very right hand side, you're going to see timeout five. What that's telling the HTT perf command is for every request, you know, wait for it for five seconds. And if you don't get a response back from the server, go ahead and time out on the client side. So if we have any client timeouts, well, we're going to see the number increase here. Next up, we have socket timeouts followed by connection refused. Now connection refused, you want to keep an eye on if you're just starting to run your HTTP perf load tests. Um, if for some reason the connections can't reach the server or you're not running your server and you think you are, you're going to see that all of your requests came up with connection refused, which means it's not getting to the server. And then lastly, we've got connection reset if things get reset on the server side. Well, that pretty much sums it up for part one of load testing.
In part two, we're going to be taking a look at how to use HTTPerf with sessions, how to use Autobench to automate some of these HTTPerf tests, then how to visualize those results, and lastly, we'll be taking a look at some other tools you might want to know about to do load testing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.